Okay, welcome back to Market Sense. A lot of these offshore companies have done very well. You've seen the numbers of a couple of them released already and they have done very well. Uh, same is the case in point with Hinduja Global Solutions. Uh, sales up 15%, strong EBITDA performance and a 14 odd percent jump in PAT as well this time around on a quarter on quarter basis. The stock flat in uh, the nifty is flat in the session should pull up uh, hinduja global for you in particular and just show you what that one is doing in trade a percent and a half up was up close to three or four percent but i think with the currency doing what it is doing in the market mood being what it is it's come off a bit actually the currency too deserves a mention out here 63.58 so it's at a four week low down almost 34 bips uh, or 34 paise in this session again fifth straight day of losses for the rupee so that doesn't augur too well is it having its impact on the markets as we'll just check that for a bit no the nifty is flat uh, pretty much at the same levels that it was uh, so no great uh, gyrations really on the markets uh, with the rupee worsening but surely uh, this is uh, some bit of a concern but shift focus to hinduja global and speak to partha desarkar ceo of hinduja global solutions who joins us on the line from bangalore Good having you, Mr. Desarkar. Thanks so much for joining in. A good operational performance by you as well this time around. A 14% jump in PAT on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. The question really remains, this kind of EBITDA margin, is it largely led due to the currency benefits? And can you sustain this in the quarters ahead? Um, uh, before I get into that, just one correction I'll want to mention is that you uh, refer to us as an offshore company. We are actually 32% of our revenues are only offshore. Okay. Majority of our revenues come onshore. 58% of our revenues are actually onshore. So that's just one bit I thought I'll mention. And so far as profitability and EBITDA performance is concerned, we do believe that Q3 and Q4, and even though I must caution that these are forward-looking statements, uh, therefore uh, I'm putting a qualifier up front, but I think our Q3, Q4 will be even stronger than what Q2 is, and that's because of the seasonality that we have in our business. Q typically Q3 and Q4 volumes are higher than Q1 and Q2. So I would see the higher... Um, volumes driving the uh, uh, margin performance also in Q3 and Q4. Afternoon, Mr. Desarkar. It really has been a strong uh, quarter for you, the highest ever quarterly revenue, EBITDA and profits. I just want to dwell on the EBITDA a little more. We did speak of the currency improvement uh, benefiting you, uh, the decline, but uh, in terms of the pricing, can you tell us how trends are likely to shape up and where we can see your margin sustain? Is this purely a seasonal factor and can we expect a dip in the coming quarters? Okay, I thought I clarified that. Our margin performance in the coming quarters will be better than what it is today. And I also have to mention that our Q2 impact of foreign exchange is actually lower than what it was in Q1. If you recall, uh, June 30th, the rupee was at its all-time low. And it kind of strengthened by 30th of September. So the impact of that on quarter two earnings is actually less than what it was in quarter one. If I were to look at pure numbers on the 16% growth that we talked about, uh, about 6% has come because of currency, despite that. And 10% has been pure organic. So that's the play between foreign exchange and organic growth. On a pure organic basis, we believe that, um, you know, again, forward-looking statement, we will be about 20% plus on the growth side purely on an organic basis. So... If that is indeed the case, and if you're saying that this quarter has seen a muted impact of the currency on the margins too, I mean, if what kind of uh, growth, uh, you mentioned organically this much would it be, how much do you expect to end the year with? Uh, say maybe the kind of top line numbers and possibly even the estimated or the expected EBITDA margin at the end of Q4. Uh, okay, so we uh, we don't uh, give a guidance. No, I'll just give me a ballpark range. Number. Yeah, I'll say that our growth numbers will be in excess of 20 to 25 percent on a top line basis, and the ma margin on a uh, on a full year basis will be better than where it is today. Great. So let's say it's at about 12.9 percent today. I expect that to in increase. Uh, let's see if all goes well. Maybe 100 basis points on that. Wow. So you, you probably probably target northwards of 13 or closer to a 14% EBITDA margin as well. Great. That is one. You know, it will be a function of where the rupee ends and okay. it's not a function of where the rupee is at the middle of the quarter. It's a function of where the rupee is when the quarter closes. So where okay. is it on 31st of December? Where is it on 31st of March? Those things make a difference, not where is it in, in the middle of the quarter. 
What about what about the cash on the books? Uh, there's always a buzz and fairly strong right now that you're scouting for an acquisition target in Europe. Well, you know, last time also you had asked me the question. So yeah, I, I do that every quarter. You have so much of cash on your books. No, we do have cash on our books and it's meant for acquisitions and we uh, have been uh, doing acquisitions. We've done six in the last eight years. Uh, we look at acquisitions on an ongoing basis. If you're asking me, if there's a specific question as to whether we're looking at something in Europe. I would say that Europe's just one of the geographies that we're looking at. Can you tell us about your key client wins, the large deals that you bagged in the quarter and what's the pipeline now looking like? So key client wins have been there were two in the consumer electronics space and three in the telecom space. And uh, we are also looking at financial services sector. If you look at our revenues, almost 88% of our revenues come from TMT, healthcare, and consumer. Financial services is about 8 to 9%, and that's the vertical that we're trying to grow. There are some very interesting deals in the pipeline, which will have an uh, interesting mix of onshore and offshore, which is our specialty. And uh, so I'm very bullish about uh, the financial services sector. Uh, I would say that pipeline that we see as of this point of time is the strongest that we've seen in many, many years. And the reason for that is even though we did have uh, uh, some pressure on margins in the last two years, we have invested heavily in sales. And those results are actually showing up now with a lag effect of about, let's say, right. six to nine months. But our pipeline today is the strongest that it's ever, ever been. And that's showing up in the organic growth that uh, the results are uh, pointing to. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for taking time out and joining in. That's a pretty optimistic outlook on the margin improvement expected as well as strong volume growth. Hindu Talk Global petered off from the day's high at 427. Another company which put out its numbers is a Dana Bank. The profits were impacted on account.